Hello and Merry Christmas to everyone watching in December. If you're not watching in December, then I hope you had a great Christmas in December of 2019. So I was hoping to get a load of videos out this month and I've been working on them but they're not quite ready because December stuff has been happening so they'll probably be out in the new year. But what I do have is my pack of Kodachrome presets ready. I've been working on these for about six months. I wanted to put them out with the last Kodak preset bundle I did but it wasn't quite ready yet. It's been a difficult one to do Kodachrome because you can't get Kodachrome anymore. So I couldn't take a film shot and a digital shot and compare the two. And also it's just a very hard look to replicate or to replicate to a standard that I was happy with. But I'm very happy with where this bundle is now. So let me show you what this can do. Now before we start, I just need to point out that these use profiles and so they will only work with the Creative Cloud versions of Lightroom and Photoshop. You need to have the latest versions and you need to have a Creative Cloud subscription. But you can use them in Photoshop and in Lightroom and in Lightroom Classic and they will work on the mobile app as well. There have been so many different releases of Kodachrome over time so I've tried to emulate some of the major versions. I have the 1935 version which was the original release and the 1961 which was when they moved to the K12 processing and then the 1974 version which was when they moved to the K14 processing. But what I find more interesting than looking at the individual releases is trying to emulate the way Kodachrome is used by different photographers. So much can affect how images look, from what temperature the film was stored at, to how it's treated in the darkroom, to what kind of printing process was used. So I've picked three of my favourite Kodachrome photographers that all used the film in very different ways in order to try and replicate the looks they achieved with it. And these photographers are Ernst Haas, Sol Leiter and Steve McCurry. There'll be a link below this video taking you to where you can download these from. When you get the folder it will contain these files and they're all presets except for these five here that start with JW and these are the profiles so these won't show up in your preset tab and these presets won't work without these installed. So you just need to install them all together, let me show you how. So to install these presets in Lightroom Classic, click this little plus here on the presets tab and go import presets, navigate to your presets folder, select them all and import them. And here they are. To install them in the app known currently as Adobe Lightroom and it says Photoshop Lightroom when you open it, honestly Adobe, just sort it out. Um, anyway, what you do is you go to this little icon here, you click that, then you click presets down here, then you click this ellipsis here and import presets. Navigate to your folder with your presets in, select them all and click import. And here they are. And of course, once you've done this, they will also appear in your mobile app if you have that version as well. So now we've got them installed, let me run you through what you get in the pack. So these ones here are your Kodachrome stocks written out by date. In each one you have a faded and a saturated version as well as a regular version. These ones here are the ones based on particular photographer's work. And up here you've got a set of tools that work with the presets. Now while the presets all have a kind of embedded baked in grain, you can change that grain afterwards or add a vignette. So let's start with this image. If I add a Kodachrome 1935, you get a very retro look. This is the faded version. That's a bit too light for this image, but the saturated one works quite well. And you get that nice kind of very retro, slightly Technicolor kind of look. 61 upgrades to a different process. You get slightly different color casts. Again, a lighter and a more saturated version. And then we've got 74, which again moves up to the next process. And just to address a quick question I get a lot, when I make these presets, I test them out on all sorts of different cameras. You see I've got 215 different cameras here in all sorts of different lighting conditions. We've got Canon, we've got Sony, Fuji, Hasselblad, Nikon, Pentax. So if you're worried about me only testing these on Canon cameras, then you really don't need to worry because I do test these across the board to make sure that they are working across all the different brands. So we've got this image of a boat here shot on a 650D and I would give that a 1961 faded. And you can really see how the colors change there, how that sky becomes this kind of tealy cyan. Here's an image I shot at a wedding, if we give that a 1974 and then I can show you basically I have a heavy vignette and that's kind of what a heavy vignette looks like. We've got a light vignette, a medium, heavy, I think heavy here to sort of draw attention to her face. We have this image shot on a Pentax, if I wanted to make it just look really retro maybe I'd go the 1935 faded and that really does look like it was shot a long time ago now. 
So if we have a look at this image, 1961, that's probably more realistic than the 1961 faded, which will give us a lot more detail in the shadows. The 1961 is more realistic because Kodachrome was a slide film and it had a very narrow dynamic range. As soon as we put the 1961 faded on, we get more dynamic range, but this shot could have been lit differently and there could have been some fill light maybe. And this is the advantage of digital technology. This is why we use programs like Lightroom. And this image here is probably a good example to show you kind of something, how something like the 1935 saturated, what it does to the colors. We can see that the grays have now got this kind of blue tint and the greens are knocked back quite a bit, but the reds really kind of pop. So these ones are quite fun to play with, but I much prefer these ones down here based on the actual photographer's work. So if we start off with a very basic shot of some flats, apply the Hass, we can see what that does kind of doesn't do too much here, except you can see that red does pop a little bit. Probably better actually to look at an image like this that has a big red post box with some green trees in the background. We use the Hass here. You can really see what happens with the reds and how the greens kind of change. So if we take this street portrait here I took and apply the Kodachrome Hass preset, then maybe a medium vignette or maybe a light vignette works better. So if we look at this shot here of a bride getting ready in the morning, looking in a mirror, if I apply the preset here, you can really see kind of how her lips change colour there, how it's picked up that tone and given it a lot more saturation. And maybe if we put a heavy vignette on that, that's going to really draw your attention to her face. So the lighter presets have quite a strong result due to the way Soul Lighter used expired and overheated film to really push the colours, often resulting in very heavily saturated areas of colour. And one thing this preset kind of does is sort of flatten out the colour. I can probably demonstrate this by showing you this picture of this rose here. So lighter one, if you look at the detail of that rose there, it's kind of really been knocked back, but you've got this very strong area of colour. And lighter two kind of does the same thing, but in a much more subtle way. But it's still quite a step from the original. So if we look at this shot, shot on a Pentax, if I give it a lighter one, Try it with a vignette as well. There you can really see the severity of, uh, of this preset. It's a very distinctive look. And if we use it on this picture of a bus window here, we've got a nice big area of red to test it with. So you can really see how that kind of flattens out the area of colour. In a bit more detail, use that one. I think I like the version 1 here. So if we look at this Fuji shot here and we add the lighter preset, it's not anywhere near as severe as those big areas of flat colour, it's just basically because of this type of shot, but the colours are doing something quite nice there. But I can tell on the image like this, because of this massive area of red here, you're going to get that really nice sort of flat look again. It's such a distinctive look. So let's now move to the McCurry presets, which are probably my favourite of the lot. And because Steve McCurry is a travel photographer, I got my photographer friend, Mark Howe, to send me some raw files from his recent shoot on location in India. And Mark is someone who I was at college with, and he's a really talented photographer, so you should go check him out on Instagram. His Instagram handle is at Howie Howe. Uh, he's worth following. So first, we have this guy here, and I'm going to add a McCurry 1 preset. And straight off the bat, that's looking a lot more Kodachrome-like. I'm going to add a heavy vignette to that with this preset tool. And you can really see how much that preset has changed the image. The reds are really popping, the skin tones have got a lot warmer, but the greens have uh, knocked back a lot. So here's another shot, kindly donated by Mark. And it's looking a little dark, so I'm just going to shift double click to apply an automatic exposure level. I love shots like this, where you have a group of people and just one person is looking out at the viewer. I think it creates a really interesting dynamic. So let's add a McCurry 2 to this and also a medium vignette just to draw your attention to that guy there. Just add a little bit more to the exposure and we're done. We've gone from that to that. And another from Mark. Let's add McCurry 3 to this one. That's looking good. I'm also going to add McCurry 3 to this one here and a heavy vignette here as well. And that's where we were and that's where it's taken us. I really like these presets. I was worried for a while I wouldn't be able to replicate that particular Kodachrome look but I'm glad I persisted with it because I think they're working really well now. Another from Mark again. This one's a great shot. Whenever you get a shot with lots of foliage in like this I'm always tempted to look at my Aerochrome presets from my preset pack 3. So let's add an Aerochrome 1. <laughs> that looks cool. 
but that's the wrong preset pack. Get preset pack 3 if you want that look. Anyway, Kodachrome. Preset pack 3.1. Let's go with Macari 1 for this one. And I think that's added a little too much grain, so I'm going to knock that back a bit by selecting the light grain preset. I'm going to add a medium vignette just to draw your attention to the figure with the bicycle here. I'm a fan of a vignette. So that's where we were, and that's where we are after applying the preset. I'm really happy with where these presets have gone to. So if you want to get these presets or any other preset packs that I've made, there are links down below in the description that will take you to somewhere where you can get those from. And if you do choose to purchase these, then I want to thank you very much because this is what supports my channel and helps me pay the bills and feed my kids and all that usual stuff that we people have to do when we grow up. So drop me some comments below this video, let me know what you think of them, and if you do get them, I'd love to see what you do with them, so please upload to Instagram and hashtag JWPresets so I can find them at me if you want, so I'll get a little notification. It'd be great to see what you do with them. Kodachrome is a lovely stock, and I'm pretty happy with where I've got these presets, so uh, over to you. I'll see you next time.